Well, Patrick McHenry, thank you for coming to our crowdfunding event here today. It's a pleasure having you and helping us out and also for us to help everybody else out worldwide to let them know what's going on in the crowdfunding space. And we have David Wheel with us as well. It's a pleasure having you. Maybe you could Thanks. tell us a little more about your bill and you know some of the things you're going to be covering today. Well, the idea is obviously the marketplace is there from the conferences you've held around the country. Uh, there is support in the community um, uh, and a willingness to uh, mesh uh, microfinance with crowdsourcing and using technology as it stands today to um, to actually uh, get capital formation going for small businesses. Uh, my legislation is very simple. It removes a SEC and a regulatory and barrier in law that we have mm -hmm. uh, for um, equity side raising uh, from small sources from a large crowd of folks. And so uh, what we want to do is enable uh, the folks that attend your conference to actually take uh, this idea and put it into action in a new way. So what do you think we need to do to get this through the Senate? Well, if you look at uh, the action and activity of the online community with SOPA and PIPA as a very real example of online action and motivation and constituents calling and writing and emailing, um, we need to make sure that the Congress understands. We've passed the legislation out of the House. It is in the Senate. We need to make sure that the Congress understands um, that there is a desire among a cross-section of Americans uh, for us to pass this legislation and act it into law. Yeah. And Congressman, for the benefit of the people that are watching, what are SOPA and PIPA? Well, you have, the, <laughs> um, you have two pieces of legislation that would, in essence, uh, uh, root out uh, um, uh, online piracy, but in a way that is uh, very onerous. Uh, for folks that have websites or have uh, uh, even uh, internet service providers. Um, and uh, because of that construct and, and how uh, the legislation acts, it, it is uh, very burdensome to a wide array of tech communities. And that's why folks got activated. That's why Wikipedia went black. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a couple days ago. Yeah. So what could people watching right now uh, through you know the Soul Loft or through your website, do to support this. Well, they can email me. Uh, they can call my office, and we'll give them all the information and background on our legislation. Um, then they can call their senators. Uh, the president has already uh, issued a statement of administrative policy in support of our legislation. Uh, there is a wider view in Washington that this this can pass. We just have to get the Senate to act. Right. And the, the, the concern that's been expressed is, you know, uh, one, of, one of potential for fraud. And what, it, what, do you, what do you think, how do you think that that's going to be addressed, if you will, in the, in the crowdsourcing? Well, I mean, if, if that were the case, then uh, if, if uh, fraud were a widespread uh, occurrence, uh, eBay couldn't exist. Right. I think uh, the construct of this legislation is such that you would have uh, portals, uh, who would that, that would be the conduits for this, and then there would be a mechanism for individuals mm -hmm. to make judgments about the companies that they invest in. Right. And uh, it puts hands really in the in uh, it puts the power in the hands of the people, um, and that is what is so wonderful about crowdsourcing. Uh, you may be able to fool one person, but you can't fool a million people. You can't fool. A fool the crowd. That's right. So the good ones are going to get snapped up in all likelihood just because of the chatter that will go on with the crowd and the bad ones will probably just get turned over and left behind. That's right. And so, uh, but I think um, you would have in essence a, an eBay style uh, a, a, a portal of sorts and a, a wide variety of them and people can make judgments for themselves on, on the companies they invest in. I mean, it, really the idea um, that with proper information, mm -hmm. people can make wise investment decisions for themselves. What we now have um, is, uh, is a, uh, in what we've accepted for securities laws in this country for the last 80 years is that some people simply shouldn't be allowed to invest. Um, that uh, we now have a threshold of a million dollars uh, that we've accepted for almost the last 50 years mm -hmm. as a threshold on whether or not you're an accredited investor. So now, it, it's simply a net worth judgment on whether or not you're deeply knowledgeable on investments. I think that's a, a false premise. I think you have right. wise folks that have lower net worth, and you have folks with very high net worth that maybe shouldn't be uh, investing in, in equities. 
I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical um, when you're dealing with small amounts of capital being raised, because the bill has, has basically two cutoffs, a million dollars and then two million dollars, if I read it correctly, yes. um, that you keep the costs of, of accessing the capital markets low because a small transaction can't sustain a large cost burden. Is that correct? That's right. And now what we have under existing securities laws is for low equity raising. Um, for under five million dollars, uh, if you invest in, uh, if you have an investors, fr one investor from a state, potentially you have to register and pre-file um, uh, with the securities administrator in that state. Right. So it is too burdensome to raise small dollar amounts across the 50 states mm -hmm. under our current regulatory regime, and because of our current regulatory regime, you in essence price out. Uh, small dollar equity raising, million dollars, two million dollars. Uh, you price that out of the marketplace. Before we even think about the person who wants to open a second branch of their coffee shop and wants to raise a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars from the people who come in every day and order a latte. I mean I think it's important to know that you know 99 percent of the businesses starting are not necessarily tech companies. You know, there's the bakeries, there's the car wash, it's the local businesses you have in your neighborhood. And I think one of the safety nets is that you actually have people you know within the neighborhood, in the region that's close to you, that know who you are and what you're doing. That's right. That's I right. I think that's important. And you can build credibility. You can build performance standards. If, uh, if you have that coffee shop and you want to open mm -hmm. a second, second branch, um, uh, then you can actually show a return for your investors and then you can go back to them to raise equity for an additional branch or more. Um, and I think, I think, you know, I think um, people are more knowledgeable uh, than regulators in Washington or even politicians in Washington think that they are. And so they should be able to be freed up in order to do this. Well, Congressman McHenry, thank you for coming to the Soho Loft and the events where we would try to educate everybody on crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. Pleasure having you. Thank you, David. Appreciate Good it. Good having you. Thank you. Terrific. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Likewise.